so let me begin hmm. good morning everyone and this is ba2 class for poetry and drama section and in this class i shall discuss o to the west wind poem by pb shelley and in this poem i shall uh, discuss the canto number 3 Uh, I have already discussed Canto One, Two, the formal aspect, basic introduction to the poet and the poem. Already it is discussed. So let us continue this poem. Okay. So let me share this screen. And this is the poem. I was supposed to start it from Canto Number Three. So this is Canto Number Three of O to the West Wind. and in canto number 1 poet is talking about dead leaves in canto number 2 he is talking about clouds which are there into the sky and they are formed upon the ocean and in the third canto the poet is talking about waves especially sea waves okay so this stanza is also very important and you might be looking at that the poet is talking about very abstract phenomena of life at the same time he is trying to make it pictorial make it visible so you would experience that this poet is also trying to use different kinds of imagery i have already discussed about imagery so he is talking about auditory effect he is talking about visual effect he is talking about tactile sense so many things he has already talked about in this particular poem and it seems to be that things are going into symmetrical order ise ek ke baad ek cheeze bata raha hai symmetrical order is very unique compact design and one thought in one stanza and another thought in another stanza and then another thought in another stanza so it seems that things are in symmetrical order jaise hota na bahut soch samajh kar ke poet jo hai cheezon ko describe kar raha hai so this is what you can also expect uh, in this stanza that as he has given due emphasis on dead leaves and how the west wind uh, drives these west uh, dead leaves and in the second stanza how the west wind and drive the clouds and scatters it into into the sky and changes its own you can say description the clouds they become the tomb the grave of the dying year when the second canto is going to get concluded let's see what poet is trying to visualize trying to describe trying to reflect into the third canto okay so third canto says thou who didst waken his summer dreams from his summer dreams see what the poet is again saying see in all stanzas all cantos you have seen that thou word has been used frequently it means that the poet is addressing the west wind and i said it is an ode and it is always written in the form of an address that somebody is address into the poem ode तो इसमें भी देखिए वही फीचर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक मेंटेन्ड है ही इज एड्रेसिंग अगेन दाओ हु डिडस्ट वेकन डिडस्ट इट मींस दैट इट इज पास टेंस कभी जगा दिया करते वेकन मींस जगा देना ओके फ्रॉम हिज समर ड्रीम्स समर ड्रीम्स इन द सेंस दैट समबडी वाज स्लीपिंग इनटू द सीजन ऑफ समर और यू कैन से in the season of summer there is no work there is no disturbance let me continue to the next line then you will understand who was sleeping into the season of summer the blue mediterranean who was sleeping into the month of summer or into the season of summer the blue mediterranean and why the mediterranean is blue again as i mentioned that when sunlight falls upon the water surface it creates purplish or you can say azure or bluish effect so water is supposed to be of blue color okay i have not shared the screen i have shared the screen but i am switching because you people are uh, sending request to join the class so okay so he is saying that this west wind has this power to waken the blue mediterranean 
who is perhaps sleeping into the month of summer and sleeping into very you can say a dreamy condition he is not only sleeping he is lost into dreams what it refers to uh, when we talk about the blue mediterranean that is sleeping into its dreams during the summer season it means that the waves of the sea are not so severe they are not so high the tide is not so high okay so that says that that says that in the month of summer the tides are low and the mediterranean water is very clear it is not having tides okay so it is sleeping no very major movement is happening into the waters of the mediterranean okay now that is why it is sleeping where he lay lulled by the coils of his crystalline streams and this blue mediterranean is described into the month of summer into the season of summer like what that it was laying jaise leta pada hai it was sleeping lulled by the coils of his crystalline streams coils jo gole gole structure mein waves ke jo flow bante hain ebbs bante hain uske through uh, perhaps the poet is trying to visualize jaise pani mein aap patthar maarte hain to gole color ka ebbs banti hain jo coils jaise expand hoti hain so perhaps poet is trying to visualize the waves which are flowing the water that is flowing gently and making a ripple jo ripple banti hai wo usko coils ke form mein visualize karne ka prayas kar raha hai and he is saying that this mediterranean was lost into sleep like somebody has recited a lullaby lull lulled means jaise loriyan suna kar ke sula diya jata hai bachcho ko in that way this uh mediterranean had been lulled by the coils of his crystalline streams crystalline means crystal clear water that is transparent and the streams the surface water the flow of a gentle you can say ripples that are happening on the surface of the mediterranean so you see how the picture is being created of the ocean not ocean you say uh, the mediterranean sea that its surface water is not much disturbed it it's not that much you can say having flow of water it is not having wind into the month of summer and that is why this mediterranean seems to be sleeping lost into dreams and it seems that this mediterranean has been told a kind of lullaby that has attracted him and uh, affected him to sleep okay and by what and the see the layer of the earth for this mediterranean surface is very crystalline the stream is very transparent and pure in the sense that the water is very clean beside a pumis isle in babies bay pumis isle is an island a group of island okay and there is a babies bay that is the place that is near italy and it is it is in the gulf of uh, naples somewhere uh, there so you see poet is also in italy as i told you in the beginning in cassin forest near florence he was staying there he visited that place and the setting is over there and this place when he is coming to the mediterranean he is talking about the place babies bay that is there you see the uh, map of the world and uh, especially italy you will find that there is a gulf of naples and there there is babies bay and pumis isle is also there so setting is now in the third stanza coming to this place and from here poet is looking at the mediterranean sea and he finds that the sea is crystalline it is sleeping into the month of summer but now the west wind is coming and it has awakened the west uh, the, this particular uh, mediterranean sea and saw in sleep old palaces and towers quivering within the waves intense day and see what poet is trying to describe here that 
when this mediterranean was sleeping and lost into dreams what did it see isne dekha kya in the sleep usi sleep mein sote hue that the old palaces and towers quivering within the waves intense day now it has different connotations different you can say interpretations uh, can you imagine that there are palaces and towers which are inside the ocean perhaps not there is one possible interpretation of this line or these two lines is that the cliffs the towers the palaces which are beside the seashore jo seashore ke kinare hain they might be getting reflected into the water of the mediterranean wo mediterranean ke water mein kya hai reflect ho rahe hain so that is why he is saying that this reflection is quivering because the water is now being disturbed by the west wind and the towers that are there on the side of the sea coast they are also reflecting glimmering into the water and they are getting disturbed so when water is uh, moving it shows that things are shaking and quivering in normal way as well when there is smallest ripple of uh, ripple into water surface uh, you will find that the picture the reflection that is created inside the water on the surface of the water where you say it becomes it starts shaking jaise aap balti mein pani bhar ke dekhiye side ki cheeze usme kya hote reflect hoti hain yes you drop a small pebble ek chhota sa kankar daliye it will start shaking so this is one interpretation that uh, perhaps shelly is saying the second interpretation is that the ruins of the old times there were different uh, you can say palaces cliffs and towers that have got ruined because many years have passed you can thousand years have passed and due to tectonic activity the students of geography might be knowing that plates shift and some places they have been submerged into water they may be this kind of palaces these kinds of places towers and cliffs which have now been submerged into water and due to the crystalline coils as he has mentioned into the line uh, that they are getting reflected and they are visible but when this water is shaking the structure or the visibility or the reflection of the ruins that are submerged into water they are quivering jaise aap pani mein kuch cheez andar bhi rakha hai and you just drop a, a pebble just a smart stone uh, and the ripple is created even inside the image that is there the object is there it's also getting distorted it seems that it is shaking it's quivering jaise kaap rahi ho this is both uh, interpretation both is possible or the third thing that is possibly that the west wind is creating a kind of illusion into the mind of the poet they may not be the palaces outside on the sea shore the towers the cliffs they may not be the ruins that are submerged into water but they might be sea weeds willows jo hoti hain jaise aapne dekha hoga badi badi ghase hoti hain when water flows they flow with the water they bend down and poet is trying to create an image that they are like towers and they are like cliffs and they are shaking these three possible interpretations can be there so we are not sure which one is correct and that is why it seems that the west wind is creating illusion bhram paida kar rahi hai okay let me come to the next line and when it is quivering in the intense day when the day is in the broad daylight and that is in the broad daylight only you can see what is inside there into the water and reflection is also seen and in the night when the towers are having light only then they can be seen into the water in the form of reflection but in daylight the reflection can be seen into water so this is what he is saying all overgrown with azure moss what is now coming to uh, the point the 
these palaces and towers which he is talking about they have overgrown with azure moss and flower see it means that he is confused between the seaweed and the towers that are submerged into water and he find that they have been overgrown with some moss wo jo kai lag jati hai na the color changes and some kind of a small fungi and algae they grow up uh, on the surface of the stone the structure the tower cliff whatever is inside the water and that is creating a kind of illusion for him okay so he is saying that these things these uh, towers and palaces which are inside the mediterranean sea they have overgrown with this moss and flower but they look so sweet because they are attracting the attention of the poet the sense faints picturing them and this attraction is so powerful see he has also put the exclamation mark uh, when he is saying that the sense faints picturing them uh, like he is not able to really understand his senses of of uh, creating the picture fails he is trying to create the picture of what it looks like what it is it may be the reflection of the sea uh you can say coast the towers that are on the sea coast are the submerged uh towers and cliffs and palaces or it is the sea weeds which are called billows they blow with the water and they bend down and he sees that moss is created even on the uh, billows so he is not able to totally figure out his sense is fainting sense is not capable and he accept that thou whose path the atlantic level powers and now perhaps he is coming uh, to the point where mediterranean and the atlantic ocean meet and what is this place this is the place the strait of gibraltar uh, students of geography again might be knowing this the strait of gibraltar is somewhere between spain and morocco where these two places are meeting these two countries are meeting and on the one side especially there is the mediterranean ocean and on the other side there is the uh, sorry mediterranean sea and on the other side there is atlantic ocean so strait is that kind of water body which divides two land uh, you can say bodies and this is the place and see why this place is so important uh, why atlantic ocean is in the context of the mediterranean because the west wind is formed into atlantic ocean and when the west wind blows from west to the east side as mentioned see the mediterranean is in the east side and uh, atlantic is in the west side and from there the atlantic level powers it means that the atlantic ocean feels a tide a huge tide and its water level goes up it powers up and then what happens cleaves themselves into chasm what is the chasm chasm is a narrow space narrow opening uh, just let me come to the uh, uh, pictorial form like see this is a shape and here where my uh, these parts are meeting this is a chasm okay so this is narrow way through which things are passing so this is what pb shelley is saying that the tides from the atlantic ocean through strait of gibraltar when they enter into the mediterranean sea then what happens he is going to describe next okay the chasm is the strait of gibraltar perhaps because mediterranean meets uh, atlantic ocean through the strait of gibraltar while far below the sea blooms and the oozy woods which wear the sapless foliage of the ocean and when this west wind is bringing the powerful tides from the atlantic ocean and it is going to meet a very small narrow passes that is strait of gibraltar the chasm he is mentioning then what happens the flow becomes so powerful because whole water is going to be compressed in one narrow opening 
and this happens that the flow of water the speed of water gets intense gets high and it starts cutting down you can say the ground surface okay and in the what in the mediterranean ocean when this wave enters it creates huge disturbance and what kind of disturbance happens there this is what he is mentioning that the sea bloom sea level rises jab achanak jo hai mediterranean mein pani jo hai mediterranean sea mein water aata hai atlantic ka to sea level kya bloom karta hai uthne lagta hai and the oozy woods oozy woods the woods that are there which are having moisture moist jo places hain plants and trees hain they are covered with water they are submerged into water okay which we the sapless foliages what are the sapless foliages sapless foliages are those plants which don't have a strong stem as i mentioned sea weeds okay a willows of the ocean they start blowing they are bend down with the flow of a high stream or water and see now you connect this last tercet of this poem or this stanza with the first second stanza second so why this picture is quivering because the west wind has entered on the surface or into the mediterranean sea from the atlantic ocean and the atlantic ocean when it is coming or west wind is coming through the atlantic ocean it is not coming alone it is also bringing the wave power what he is saying atlantic level powers so the power of atlantic is also brought in full force into mediterranean sea and that creates disturbance whole water that was very you can say calm and crystalline and without any movement into the month of summer season of summer gets disturbed and things which are there inside the water or the reflections that are made on the surface of the water they start quivering wo kaapne lagte hain you see what pictorial image of the west wind and what strength of the west wind poet is describing and how he is showing that this west wind has this power that it can even disturb and it can frighten it can waken even the vast sea like the mediterranean okay and now he is saying thy voice and suddenly grow grey with fear and see what is the voice of the west wind west wind is personified see in odes also some non living objects are personified and treated as living objects and throughout this poem you are seeing that west wind west wind is doing the activity the job that a person does so west wind has been put into the form of a human being it has been personified and its voice is that it means that the west wind also speaks and what kinds of uh, kind of voice west wind has it has the voice that can bring fear among the people who hear it it means that the mediterranean sea is frightened by the voice if of the west wind perhaps this is what poet is trying to say and it is turning grey jaise hota na ki dar karke bilkul udas ho jana ya fir jaise chehre pe sukha pan aa jana so this is the fear that west wind creates when it comes with the power of its own and the power of the atlantic ocean the whole mediterranean is frightened and tremble and despoil themselves and what happens that this mediterranean is entering and this is happening that the whole sorry this uh, west wind is entering into the mediterranean sea and it is creating that fear that the whole mediterranean starts trembling it is at in tremble and despoil and it starts getting like see uh it loses its value mediterranean itself did not remain firm 
it loses its own ground its own hold upon its own waves because the west wind has disturbed whole control of the mediterranean on its own waves and water so this is what the power of the west wind that is creating influence impact and disturbance into the mediterranean sea so the waves of uh, water they are being brought up from uh, you know atlantic ocean and they are creating disturb into the mediterranean and that is why perhaps recognizing the strength of this particular west wind poet is trying to talk to her or talk to west wind and he says oh here and west wind is he see not her a uh, uh, west wind is described as very powerful very strong and ferocious object or person then uh, when we personify objects we call male if they are strong they are terrible and we call female when they are soft when they are weak and west wind has been described as a very powerful very strong very you can say ferocious Uh, object so west wind can be treated as male uh, person in this particular uh, ode so he is trying to talk to the west wind and he is addressing oh here okay so thank you for today